hamburger clown from a fantasy land, a deranged rabbit man in spandex, and a whole lot of weird ethnic stereotypes were just a few of the casualties of changing fast food mascot culture. Undoubtedly, the most famous fast food mascot of all time is Ronald McDonald, the hamburger-loving clown who's generally been the public face of McDonald's since 1963. Ronald was originally created as a mascot for just the Washington, D.C. area as a Bozo the Clown type character. Over the decades, Ronald's look evolved and more characters were added to his world until there was an entire McDonald land of weird monsters and animals selling kids french fries and milkshakes. In the 80s and 90s, these characters were everywhere, usually advertising during children's TV programming and sometimes very weird computer games. <laughs> oh boy, kids, are we gonna have fun! I can't wait to help you make a great sign or a poster. By 2003, Ronald and his pals had mostly been phased out as McDonald's refocused their marketing on adults rather than children. With fast food being increasingly linked to obesity, marketing it to children has become problematic and the view of clowns by the general public has shifted significantly in the last couple decades. Where they were once a popular and beloved source of children's entertainment, they've come to be seen as creepy at best and a source of absolute terror at worst. Ronald still sometimes appears at public events and for the Ronald McDonald House charity, but it's unlikely you'll see him in a commercial again anytime soon. McDonald Land was introduced in the 1970s as a land of magic and hamburgers, and a whole world of characters for Ronald to interact with on TV in strange, sappy commercials. The original McDonald Land residents included Ronald, of course, but also the oft forgotten Evil Grimace, who had four arms and wanted to steal milkshakes. The lands were also haunted by the goblin faced Hamburglar, the thieving Captain Crook, and the standard figures of Law and Order, Mayor McCheese, and Officer Big Mac. Greetings, friends! What this place needs is more, uh, uh cheeseburgers. Yeah, cheeseburgers, yeah! The Surreal campaign was a huge success in getting kids' attention, and McDonald Land advertisements continued until the early 2000s. Along the way, several of the original characters were phased out or given a new purpose. Grimace became a lovable goofball, the Hamburglar was softened, and Birdie the Early Bird was introduced. Mayor McCheese and Officer Big Mac more or less disappeared following a lawsuit from children's show creators Sid and Marty Croft, who alleged that several of the McDonald Land characters were rip-offs of their show H.R. Puffin Stuff. McDonald's lost the lawsuit, with the jury pointing out specifically that Mayor McCheese looked too much like Puffin Stuff himself. While the official reason for their retirement has never been officially stated, it's generally thought that the retired McDonald Land characters, including McCheese, Big Mac, and Captain Crook, were the ones that most resembled characters from Puffin Stuff. Mayor McCheese has appeared in an occasional animated feature, and will always have Officer Big Mac's giant head to act as a jail for ill behaved play place brats. Grimace was originally introduced as a sneaky purple blob who wanted to steal milkshakes before he became the happy guy who was simply Ronald's big purple pal. Even his association with milkshakes mostly went away until the Grimace birthday shake debuted in 2023. But in the 1970s, Grimace was still a milkshake monster, so when McDonald's debuted their shamrock shake, they also turned Grimace green. I always turn green about this time of year when McDonald's has delicious green shamrock shakes. Later, they introduced a new Grimace to help promote their annual shakes. Grimace's Irish uncle, Uncle O'Grimacy. He was Grimace-shaped, green, and dressed like a leprechaun. His job? To deliver shamrock shakes every spring. Uncle O'Grimacy disappeared by the mid-80s, most likely as part of the streamlining of the McDonald Land characters. But even poor Uncle O'Grimacy isn't free from bad internet reporting. Even today, a 1997 parody article about his fate published by The Onion is believed by some. The obviously ridiculous story is that in the 1980s, an actor dressed up as Uncle O'Grimacy for public appearances in Philadelphia began making comments in support of the Irish Republican Army, an anti-British paramilitary group. Nevertheless, McDonald's has said it has no plans to bring Grimace's magically minty uncle back anytime soon as a political figurehead, a milkshake mascot, or anything else. In 1986, McDonald's decided to take a different angle with their advertising in an attempt to draw attention to their dinner option for adults, introducing Mac Tonight, a sunglasses-wearing piano player with a moon for a head. Mac would sit at his piano and sing a McDonald's-themed parody of Mac the Knife, a song popular with many famous crooners, including Frank Sinatra and Bobby Darin. 
The Mac Tonight version of the song was meant to appeal to baby boomers' nostalgia for the 50s, and the campaign was a huge success in its goals of attracting adults to eat dinner at McDonald's. Although Mac Tonight starred in almost 30 commercials, gained global attention, and even landed a line of Happy Meal toys, the smiling moon man was put to pasture in 1989. The estate of Bobby Darren, who had taken Mac the Knife to number one in the 1950s, sued McDonald's, claiming that their song infringed on Darren's melody, and the look of Mac infringed on Darren's own appearance. McDonald's decided not to fight the lawsuit. Since 1989, Mac Tonight has made a few appearances here and there, but the character has more recently been co-opted as imagery used by far-right groups, which means it's not likely you'll see him hawking hamburgers again in the near future. If you believe in magic, then I've got a place for you. McDonald's main competitor in the burger game is Burger King, and like McDonald's, Burger King introduced a fantasy land of characters designed to sell their food to kids. The Burger King kingdom was ruled by the Burger King himself, but this group of characters would be phased out by the 80s. Only the King would be reintroduced in 2004, with a slightly different look and a different target audience in mind. This new King had a larger head and an unchanging creepy smile. The off-putting nature of this look was played up in a series of somewhat edgier comedy commercials meant to appeal to teens and young adults. Despite appearing in numerous commercials and even getting his own video games, the weirder, sneakier, revamped Burger King was forced to abdicate his advertising throne in 2011. You can probably guess why. Because he was too creepy and off-putting. Although some praised the King ads for their creativity and hipness, this praise didn't translate to sales. During this same period, McDonald's did well by focusing its marketing on the food, and Burger King decided to follow suit. The Burger King was brought back briefly in 2015 to help promote a high-profile boxing match, which everyone thought was just as weird then as it sounds now. So what became of his kingdom? The Burger King had a magic ring that would allow him to do numerous tricks, including magically summoning food. But his main antagonist was the Duke of Doubt, who tried and failed to prove that the king was faking his magic. Other characters included Sir Shakelot, a knight who loved milkshakes and was always shivering because they made him cold, the Wizard of Fries, a robot powered by french fries, and the Burger Thing, a giant talking hamburger. By the 1980s, however, it was apparent that the Burger King kingdom couldn't match the appeal of McDonald Land and that the Duke of Doubt would never steal kids' hearts like the Hamburglar. By 1990, they moved away from the magical fantasy characters of the Burger King kingdom to focus on hipper pastures. Enter the Burger King Kids Club, which featured a gang of cool 90s kids who appeared not only in commercials, but also in newsletters and toys designed to make kids feel like part of a ground beef-centric gang. The multicultural club of burger enjoyers included the technology-loving leader KidVid, IQ the Nerd, Jaws the tall kid who loved to eat, Boomer the sporty one, Snaps who loved to take pictures, Wheels a sensitively named wheelchair user, and JD a dog with goggles. After a while, they added Lingo, the kid who could draw. The BK Kids Club campaign was a success for at least a little while. The Kids Club continued for the rest of the 90s, but was fading out by 1999. The restaurant stopped calling their kids' meals Kids Club Meals and started calling them Big Kids Meals. It seems likely that the rollerblading pack of 90s kids were just too 90s for the new millennium. The Kids Club quietly disappeared by the early 2000s, being replaced in 2004 by a bunch of weird little animated characters called the Honbats, who ended up having a much shorter tenure than the Kids Club. In the late 90s, Taco Bell launched one of its most successful ad campaigns ever in the form of a chihuahua that wanted nothing more than to eat at Taco Bell. Yo quiero Taco Bell. The Chalupa-loving dog appeared in dozens of commercials between 1997 and 2000 and was a cultural phenomenon at that time. However, the Chihuahua proved to be one of the most controversial corporate mascots in history as various Latino advocacy groups pointed out that a Spanish-speaking Chihuahua who's obsessed with tacos is actually pretty offensive. Ultimately, it wasn't complaints of racism or even boycotts over the character that got the Chihuahua fired. In the end, the dog wasn't making them money. Everyone knew what Taco Bell was because of the popularity of the commercials, but a little dog with a questionable accent didn't make people want to dash out for a crunch wrap. The period featuring these ads saw the biggest drop in revenue for Taco Bell to date, which led to not only Gidget the Chihuahua getting fired, but Taco Bell's CEO as well. One of the best-known fast-food mascots of the 1980s and 90s was the Noid, 
a claymation figure designed to entice people to order Domino's pizza. At a time when Domino's advertised that they could get you a hot pizza in under 30 minutes, the Noid was a weird little dude that represented all of the obstacles that might try to slow down the valiant Domino's delivery drivers. The character was so popular that he even had his own video games and toys. Despite the urging of the commercials themselves, it was very difficult in the late 80s to avoid the Noid. The nearly unstoppable popularity of the Noid came to an end in January 1989, when a 22-year-old man named Kenneth Lamar Noid went into a Domino's Pizza restaurant in Atlanta with a gun and took two employees hostage. Noid, it turns out, was a paranoid schizophrenic who believed that the character of the Noid was based on him and that the commercials were designed to taunt him. He demanded a ransom of thousands of dollars and held the employees for five hours. They only escaped when Noid took a break to eat a pizza. Noid was institutionalized until his death in 1995. The animated Noid was already on the way out and was quietly retired after the incident, only to make occasional brief returns over the years. So discard this joker and be a winner. It might be a stretch to call Quiznos Spung Monkeys beloved in a universal sense, but there are certainly some out there who look back on them fondly. If you were watching television commercials for sub sandwiches in 2004, chances are decent that these hideous creatures are burnt into your memory. We love these subs! Cause they are good to us! The original version of the Spung Monkeys were created by animator Joel Veach in 2002 for a viral video called We Like the Moon that had nothing to do with Quiznos. It featured two weird, messed-up monkey dudes with human eyes and mouth singing about, unsurprisingly, how much they liked the moon. Someone at Quiznos apparently saw that and thought this would be a great way to sell sandwiches. So a reworked version of the song that praised the greatness of toasted subs aired during the Super Bowl in 2004 as a kind of anti-commercial, going against the usual high-budget showcases that the Super Bowl tended to see. It was a weird era for Quiznos. I want to put you in my mouth, Quiznos sub. Seriously, get in my mouth. The ad and the charmingly grating song earned the main Quiznos office tens of thousands of phone calls in the week following the Super Bowl. However, Quiznos franchisees hated the weird commercial, with one Alabama shop putting up a sign denying any involvement in the ad. While Quiznos never disclosed the effect the strange ad had on their sales, the Spung Monkeys were retired before the end of 2004, but 20 years later, the hideous little fuzzballs made a return as the failing Quiznos company sought a return to their roots.